All right, everybody, welcome to Unscripted from my basement, which will soon be the studios at the junction, as we have talked about in Old Hilliard. Can't wait, and that will be coming here in the next few months. But all that aside, uh, two-time, now now two-time guest, um, you, anybody that follows me knows I'm a huge, huge fan of I Am Second, and, uh, and, and also a huge, huge fan of my guest, uh, Mr. Doug Bender. Doug, why don't you introduce yourself, and in case anybody doesn't know you, go ahead and introduce yourself, and we'll, uh, we'll jump in from there. Yeah, well, it's really great to be on with you again. I always like our talks. Um, I get to do lots of interviews in my line of work, and uh, yours is one I've always enjoyed doing. So, yeah, I've been working with I Am Second for quite some time. Uh, we're a ministry. Uh, you'll probably run into us online if you've seen us anywhere, uh, telling the stories of people whose lives have been changed when Jesus became first in their, in their life. Um, so my role on the team is I get to write a bunch of stuff. So I get to um, do the blog and do the books and uh, help communicate uh, via that that medium so and then I get to go on stuff like this and talk to you man and tell you all about it <laughs> that's awesome and w- literally one of my favorite guests and, and it's uh, as, as evidence of the fact that you're back again I really enjoyed our our first conversation and you and I've had uh, some interactions over the years uh, as you said with the blog and some other things so um, but let's, geez, there's a few things to talk about. So we, uh, we were originally going to do this a few, few weeks ago. And then unfortunately we were in some snow and had to, uh, had to make some quick changes and, and uh, those things happen. But um, that being said, let's, let's start with um, loud, crazy love, because we were going to try to come on and, and really talk about that in, in, in advance of Valentine's day weekend. Uh, you all were nice enough to provide me a copy and, or at least a, uh, a preview of the film. I watched it with my wife and um, it was powerful. Can we talk a little bit about Loud Crazy Love? Yeah, you know, it, it's funny. Sometimes when we start uh, an interview with somebody, we don't exactly know where it's going to go. Um, you know, these aren't scripted necessarily. We generally have an idea of what the story is, but they're not scripted. And when we um, started talking with Brian Welch, um, from Corn, um, he uh, we just knew we had something special. Um, very early on, with I Am Second was first started, um, he was one of our very first interviews, and we've kind of just journeyed with him through the years. Um, and as we sat down to do a follow up, we said, "Man, there is this is more than an eight eight minute video. Yeah. You know, we've got to do something more." And that's that's really where Loud Crazy Love came in, and it's it was our first full length documentary. Um, that we said, let's, let's go and do this. Yeah, it, it was. And so for anybody listening um, or watching, it follows Brian and his daughter. And, mm-hmm. and, um, and as you said, I think Brian is, Brian was really for me as, as a fan of I am second for many years now, that was one of the first ones that you're like, well, there's something going on over here with this ministry or this, this um, uh, foundation, whatever, whatever you want, want to call it or label it. There's something going on. Movement, I think, is the word I like to use. There's something yeah, yeah. going on over here because this guy and his story was so public and, and he was public. And so then w- what this story does is follow um, his his journey, but also follows the journey of his daughter and, and his love for his daughter. I don't want to give too much away because I want people to see it. Um, so let, let's pause real quick there. If they want to see it, how do they see it? Yeah, uh, Loud Crazy Love. Um, you just go go Google that. You'll find our website, Loud Crazy Love, um, crazy with a K, and um, and you're gonna find this movie. Um, it is it it really is inspirational. It, w- one of the things I love about it is, that, and this is something we try to carry throughout whatever we're doing. Um, but it's that authenticity. Yes. Um, you know, when when Brian first started following Jesus, it was as dramatic a story as as there is out there. Yeah. Um, you know, a rock rock and roll legend is, you know, steps out of of that whole world, drug abuse and the craziness of, of that life and said, I'm going to go follow Jesus. Um, and um, we all rooted for him. You know, we're mm-hmm. like, man, that's awesome. That's a big, big step. Yeah. But then the real stuff happens then the then the real journey happened because you know as you and i know our lives aren't perhaps quite as as famous but no um following jesus isn't this smooth easy process it's 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 messy yeah and that's really what this movie is is about it's telling that that messy but beautiful story Mm -hmm. um 
I think that the, there's an image Brian uses in this in this movie um, that I thought was beautiful, um, and uh, it, he he said it's it's, it's like a, a a pumpkin mm-hmm. when you uh, following Jesus. You know, when you are if we are the pumpkin, Jesus is like uh, the one who's going to carve the lantern. You know, yeah. the and, and the jack o' lantern. And the first thing I do is you gotta you gotta cut open the top. And then you got to scoop out all that gunk and all that mess on the inside. Yeah. But if you do all that, he can put his light in you and you shine. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a messy process. There's no way to do that without it being painful and messy. Yeah. And I thought that it's just such a beautiful illustration. And, and really, honestly, that's what this movie's about. It's like when you first started following Jesus and he, he admits it, he goes, I, I didn't really know how to do most of this stuff. I didn't know how to be a father. I didn't know how to do simple stuff uh, um, uh, and I had to learn and mm-hmm. Jesus was good enough to teach him. Yeah. And, and it's so powerful. And I, I was going to say the same thing. It is, is so I am second. And that's what I love and appreciate about you guys. I've had the opportunity to review and, and preview some Christian films. And I say Christian, if, if you're driving, you would see air quotes. I'll say it christian films and you know there's and and look there's there's a wonderful place for that and i i'm i'm thankful that christian films exist but sometimes i believe they paint a picture that as you just said so eloquently um it's not real um you know i mean it it doesn't always end in um in a perfect story what let me let me back it does end a perfect story someday right there there will be an end that that is someday is often much further down the road than we like to think about it's not a tidy box it's not it's it's rough and it's raw and that's what i love about on um uh, uh i am second in this film it is raw it is rough and it's really behind the scenes from a guy that has addictions and has outside influences and has an audience that expects him to be a certain person and way and he had to walk away from a lot more than than i would i would challenge a lot of well i would challenge some christians have to walk away from we all have to walk away from something if we're going to choose this life and brian had to walk away from a lot in a very public eye and yeah uh, not only that he's trying to raise a daughter and so as as a dad girl myself um that really really resonated with me Mm. his his um pursuit and commitment to his daughter that that was really yeah, really powerful and i think that that little that chain of of events in his life related to his daughter is mm-hmm. is is really a driving force for him i mean when we first did our interview with him um i remember when he started talking about like one of those key turning m- moments in him yeah. When he saw his his young daughter at that point, she was just, a, I can't remember how old she was, but very, very young. And she was bouncing around the house singing one of his corn songs, and in particular, Adidas, um, which, um, you know, is a very catchy tune, but it's it was all about sex. Right. And um, he realized, oh my gosh, this is my life. This is mm-hmm. what I've done. And now my daughter is singing about this. Mm-hmm. and he he said i need a different life i need something different um and so that was like this 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 impetus for him this big turning point i need something different for my daughter yeah. so um that's i think where some of those heartstrings really get pulled when you watch mm-hmm. this movie loud crazy love because you realize that that's what he wanted i want to go be a good dad i'm yeah. gonna go follow jesus and be a dad to my daughter and he's like i didn't know how to do either of them yeah. And I, uh, my, and his daughter really struggled through a lot of things. Um, mm-hmm. and, um, and, and Brian said, you know, he's like some of his stuff, I just didn't know how to be a father, but sometimes, you know, we all get our own stuff too. And so, mm-hmm. uh, Jenea has to uh, work through a bunch of stuff and she's still on a journey, but, um, yeah, it was, it's powerful stuff, but a lot of mental illness stuff for Jenea working through that. Again, I don't want to spoil too much either, right. but issues of, um, you know, the, some of the inner emotional toil, toil she was working through, trying to figure out who she is, um, mm-hmm. thoughts of suicide and, and self-harm. And Brian was like, I, I don't know how to help her. I, yeah. I don't know how to help her, but I love her. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And uh, I, I, as a father of, I've got four, um, mm-hmm. how many times have I had to say the same thing? You know, like, right. I don't, I don't know what the right move here is, yeah. but um, so it, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. And it, and I think every parent that's ever watched their kids struggle through anything at some point we say, is this my fault? Right. Mm-hmm. Is this, is this, did I do this? Um, because they are um, 
they're they're a shadow of us you know and 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 they're 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 reflections of us and i think we all feel responsible we should feel responsible for them god entrusted us with them and um i i think at some point we've all probably said if we've seen them struggle through something is this my fault did i do this is there something that i did or something i didn't do that i could have made it better and that i i love that about the film and as you said there's there's a moment i know you exchanged um some some writing about it a review and when i got all done not to fast forward to the end but when i got all done there's a moment in the film and i don't want to give it away but i had tears in my rolling down my cheeks because Mm -hmm. there's just a moment and the 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 cinematography of how you all can and i think you know the moment i'm speaking of Mm -hmm. um with regards to he and his daughter um there was a moment and when you all captured that in film it, it, it was the moment like it, it it just was so powerful and I want people to see it so I can't give it away what that moment was yeah. <laughs> hopefully if you see it you'll know when you see it yeah. but um for me as a dad it it was so powerful having having as you said you know my my children have walked through things too and we've walked through them with them but um seeing that moment but then then I was reminded when it was all over um I was reflecting on I know we had talked about maybe writing a review and um the only thing that came to mind immediately was, you know, first Corinthians, mm. you know, and, and the love chapter specifically, and we've all heard it. We've seen it. It's yeah. probably on our, it's probably in our house somewhere on a plaque, <laughs> but when you really, really stop and think, this is what this means. These aren't just words on a plaque. This is, this is what love does. This is what love means. And that's where, as I reflected on the film, that's where I just couldn't get away from. This is the love chapter. And, yeah. and I know Brian, you know, and I, I, I don't know Brian, I, I know Brian is fighting the fight. He's fighting the good fight. Um, he's yeah. fighting things that we all maybe don't even understand, but he's also fighting the love chapter and he's doing everything he can to, yeah. to, to I think, obey scripture. Yeah. And I, it makes me think what you just said, maybe think of that, that line in there in that same passage, mm-hmm. which says love is patient, you know, it's such patient. a simple little, little line, right? But patience, it means that there is something that's going to try you over a period of time. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what those three little words mean, which Mm -hmm. means that love is something that can travel with you over long periods of time Mm -hmm. in great trouble. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and and that, again, I think you're right. That's really the picture of what you see that Janae has gone through this Mm -hmm. long period of time where she's, struggling Mm -hmm. and brian is just crazy in love with his daughter yeah and he's going to journey with her um he's going to be patient in that journey um and yeah it's a beautiful thing to really think about um yeah it it is um you know it's not always the picture of love that you get out there and other forms of media um uh you know on one side you'll get love is all this you know it's just a feeling it's just this thing you can fall in and out of and on the other side, you might see stuff that will say, oh, well, as long as you have love, everything's perfect. Right. It's and, not. you know, the truth is somewhere in the middle there that there is feelings involved, of course, but it's a lot of love is patient type stuff. Mm-hmm. It's it's a lot of love uh, keeps uh, no record of wrong type right. stuff. It um, hopes. Yeah. All, yeah, it hopes. Perseveres. All these things are, are ad- admissions that the world that love is operating in mm-hmm. isn't working right. Yeah. But love is going to make it through. Yeah. And, and you almost hope that it says, and maybe there's a message version or some, some version mm, that says yeah. it isn't always convenient. Love isn't always convenient. It's, <laughs> you know what I mean? Cause I think yeah. we want it, as you said, I think we want candy hearts and roses mm. and it's not always convenient. Sometimes love is tough. And so I think there's probably should be yeah. a new, there should be a 2020 version or 2021 version that just says maybe words like that, that mm. love's tough. It's not easy. Sounds like it, the title of a book. Love is tough. I like that. There you go. Hey, I know a guy that can write one. <laughs> so, no i love it i, I it, no pun intended um I, I i i love the film it's it's um it's very raw it's very real it's very i am second and that's what i love about you guys and everything that you guys do so um hopefully anybody listening to this will go find it again i'll put it in the post and uh links and um it's worth your time it really is yeah. and I, I think it really makes you evaluate how much we pursue the people that we say we love as well, mm-hmm. you know, um, even, and, and I would say too, one last point, I, I think it was bi-directional. 
she mm. loved him as much as he loves her. Yeah, and it was. She's You're given right. grace. Um, she's given as much grace and maybe more. I don't know them well, but just yeah. from what I saw in film, um, Jenea has given him a lot of grace and a lot of yeah. love and a lot of patience and a lot of kindness. And she um, hopes you know, yeah. for him as well. I, that's the thing I think that was so powerful. Yeah. It wasn't a one way. Uh, it's not just a story about a dad that loves his daughter. It's a story about a daughter that loves her dad really uh, so much too. That, that's very true. Doing. Yeah, very, very true. Good. Yeah, because yeah, and, and I think that even carried into the title of our, our of the film, Loud Crazy Love, and that there is um, an intenseness, a, a craziness about mm -hmm. what love really involves. Yeah um a loudness you know love love is this big bold thing that does crazy things mm -hmm. um and um yeah and you see that from from both of them yeah. and it's messy they're not always sure on how best to do it but i think that's how life is right yeah um i know i i, I love i love my kids but I, I don't always know the best way to express it or to not just express it with words but to live it and yeah. and that's the struggle that's the journey we're all on Thankfully, we have a God who has given us a, a path. He is. He came here, sent his son and said, here's how I'm going to love you. And he gave us a demonstration. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it's interesting. I, I read his story and it's the same thing. It's, it is this loud, bold thing that carries on through hardship and it's messy and it's, mm -hmm. and, and, but he stuck through it yeah. and, and he's called us to do the same. He said, yeah. Hey, it's going to be a mess, but that's what love is. It's, it's loud and crazy. And they will know us by our love. Mm, yeah. Right. And I wish I knew what scripture that was, but I know that is a scripture. Yeah, um, it is. We'll be known by our love as Christians. And in a world today that we see, um, there's so much um, that are said about Christians and there's, it's getting worse. Um, yeah. You know, I think there's a lot of labels and a lot of um, opinions on what Christianity is, but at the end of the day, they will know us by our love. And I, so- yeah. You know, I mean, I, I don't, I think, yeah. I think that if, if all else fails, just love people, care about yeah. people. Yeah, I think that's a beautiful thought because I think some, and sometimes we, I feel like we frame ourselves wrongly in that mm -hmm. we, we try to make it, uh, you know, following Jesus is about knowing the truth. Mm -hmm. And that is true. It, it, it you know, we have a truth, uh, the truth even, um, but that's not the primary thing we are to be known for. We have answers, but being the answer man or the answer woman is not the thing we're supposed to be known for. Right. You know, if, if we if we get to take a title, the title we're supposed to take is that we love people, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. which is actually a relief in one sense. Right. Because yeah. how many times have we said, ah, oh, I have this friend and I don't know what to t tell him. He's going through this stuff or he's asking questions I don't have answers for. And we think uh, and we just withdraw. Mm -hmm. um, and the beautiful thing is um, um, we don't always have to have the answer. Um, mm -hmm because what we're actually called for is uh, called to do is to love. And that is something we can give. Right. And um, that is something we can become famous for, um, yeah. you know, become known for. So yeah, it's, um, it's, a, it's a high calling, but it's mm -hmm. an important one. Which leads me to the next thing. The first time you came on, we talked about the book, um, I Found Love. And yeah. it had yet to come out and now it's out. So how, how is the book doing? How has it been received? And uh, any words on the book? Yeah, it's been really good. It's been really fun to watch folks. Uh, you know, they get it. And, uh, and there's always this little period of you don't hear anything because they're, 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 they're reading it, right? You're hoping mm -hmm. they're reading it. Right. Um, yeah, we've been getting great, great feedback from folks that have read it and um, engaged with it. Um, and one of the things that we're excited about um, with this book is, is while it, it touches on, um, you know, the topic of love that most immediately comes to mind, uh, romance and marriage and, and dating and such, it's broader than that. It also talks on a sense of belonging and friendship and, and uh, all sorts of relationships. And um, so it's been a beautiful thing to watch folks say, hey, man, this has impacted my, my friendship. This has impacted the way I work with people at at the, well, in Zoom or at the office. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> yep. Um, so, uh, because again, uh, going back to the theme we we've, we've been hitting on all, all day here is 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 love is a is a big and bold thing, and it doesn't just stay in a relationship; it, it spreads. Mm -hmm. It's the nature of what love is, um, um, and so it goes to all sorts of. It's supposed to spill out all over our lives. Mm -hmm. um, 
I think Jesus, um, I'm going to paraphrase it here. I wish I could have this quote in my head, but you know, he, he talked, Jesus talked about how, um, um, even the, even the pagan will love their friends. Right. Um, I've called you to love even your enemy. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that has been the, one of the effects of the book is that people are opening their eyes in all the places that love is supposed to flow. So mm-hmm. that's been fun. It's been fun to see. Yeah. And that's awesome. It's so good to hear. The book is fantastic. Um, just like everything else you guys do. I, I'm, I'm a fanboy. You, as you know, <laughs> I am second. pretty much everything you all do and, and really everything you guys do. Um, the other thing too, that I was thinking about, you were saying this and I, I have to share this story because you're my friend and it just happened today. Um, and I have to walk it very carefully because there's a lot of details that I, I need to leave out, but sure. Um, it goes to what we're talking about. And I reached out to someone that, um, I believe was a forgiveness or a, at least I needed to, on this topic, um, yeah. I needed, I needed to express love and appreciation for it. Mm. So today I reached out and, um, uh, in a previous life, this person worked, uh, with us and his parting gift, we got him a special parting gift. And as I told this person, my, um, I, I thank this person. I apologized. I asked for forgiveness and uh, I tell this story and, and I, I wish I could tell the whole story because it would be a lot more meaningful. But, um, <laughs> you know, the most important part was he said, uh, Aaron, you all gave me this. Um, I'll say stupid wasn't the word he used, but he <laughs> said, you all gave me this gift. And he said, I've had it in a box in my garage ever since when I left. Mm-hmm. And he said, honestly, I had no use for it. And he mm-hmm. said, because, you know, of how of, of some things that happened. Sure. His wife, he said, my wife asked me one day, why don't we just throw it away? And he said, because I'm hoping for the day that somebody will finally call and say, thank you. And we appreciated you and we loved you. Um, and we, right. we realized everything you did for us. I've, I've unfortunately given very small pieces of that story because the mm. real story is more powerful. But at the end of the day, yeah, that just happened to me today. And honestly, mm. I got so choked up because it's just, there's so much power in man it's not hard to send a text yeah send an email make a phone call anybody listening to this do it right now (laughs) pause the podcast stop the video make you know who's on your heart right now yeah that face is already in your head you know it is it's a co-worker it's a it's a relative it's it's a member maybe it's in your own house Hmm. pause it stop it whatever it is go do what you have to do. And I'm telling you, it'll mean a lot to you, but it'll mean so much more to them. Uh, it, it's, we just got to love each other, man. It's, it's, we're only here for a short time. And then before you know it, it's over. And, and that film did it, this book touches on it. And there's stories in that book that are that way. And it's just, I'm passionate, obviously about it. We, we gotta, yeah. do it. we gotta do it. That's, that's powerful stuff. It's so interesting. You said that because, um, so um, I know, I, I think we've talked before, but I'm also a local pastor. We started a church here in my, my hometown, Pittsburgh, here about uh, two years ago. And um, well, uh, I had a, a friend of mine speak for uh, speak at our church last night. We meet on Sunday nights. And um, uh, so I had the rare opportunity as a leader of a church to just sit and, and not be in charge of the, the teaching part. And um, you know what he spoke about? He spoke about what you just said. Yeah. You know, he said, he talked to, walked us through the story of David and how he was betrayed and um, beaten up by someone that he always looked up to. He even called him his father. He was a mm-hmm. father figure in his life, King Saul. And um, he had this one opportunity to, to get back at him, you know? Mm-hmm. And it happened to be that he was hiding out in a cave when Saul was looking for him and could have he could have killed him right. um, like everybody th- expected him to do and and he didn't do that but he, he did do something yeah and he that's tried right. a piece off his robe just as yeah. you know hey i got you yeah and then he he felt this incredible sense of guilt mm-hmm. that instead of loving his enemy this man who had now had been trying to kill him mm-hmm. he had instead of loving he had attacked back yeah and um, yeah, we were just, as we walked through that passage, we were all just inspired to say, man, that's not what love is. Love, love is, does hard stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's not, it's not complicated. 
there's a difference between hard and complicated. Right. You, know, you don't have to be smart to, to, to be a person of love, mm-hmm. um, which is, I guess, also a beautiful thing. Not of us, not, we don't always all feel so smart sometimes. And uh, right. <laughs> I, know I don't. I, I certainly don't. And I'm king uh, of that. <laughs> but you know what? I, maybe that's the, maybe that's why God says so often in his word that he likes to use the weak and he likes to use the simple um, because uh, maybe the, the weak and the simple are, are more aware that, you know, I can't give much, but I can give love. Right. And, and that's really well, the only thing he's looking for. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we, uh, that, the, uh, that's a lot of what we're trying to help people to see when we're telling our stories. We tell them all sorts of manner, you know, on our website and our social media and our books, but it all boils down to that. Um, be second, you know, yeah. put others before yourself. It's, it's not complicated. It's challenging and it's hard and it's messy, but it's not complicated. But it's beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's beautiful, right? The stories, and I, I, and I, I, I forgot to tell the final part of that story. He said, today I'm going to get that out of the box. Wow. And that was when it got emotional for me. You know, I mean, like a simple yeah. phone call to walk that through. So it's not complicated. We're wired for it. God, God has built us to love one another. And he exampled it, you know, all the way to the cross. So we just got to do better, you know, and I, I'm preaching yeah. to the choir. I had to make that phone call myself today. That was long overdue. And, yeah. uh, you know, but there's so much joy that came from that. I'm still talking about it. I've, I've told the story a few times already today. <laughs> um, you know, it, it, and, and I, I think tonight he's going to have a piece that maybe he hasn't had in a while. Hmm. And I, you know, I mean, to know I held the key yeah. that was as simple as a phone call for that piece yeah. that, that he's been searching for was pretty powerful. And and we all have that. We've got keys to someone else's um, a little bit of peace in their life you know, by just showing that. There's one of the stories we have in the book that has come up and man, I think pretty much every interview I've done, someone said, oh, tell us about more about that one. We had um, um, a guy, Michael is his name. He was a neo-Nazi, white supremacist, hardcore. I mean, the guy was all about hate, mm-hmm. admittedly. He thought it was a good thing. Um, and, and then one day he, he had a parole officer because he had a record of various things. Uh, and a pro officer assigned to him a new one she came knocking on his door and she was a black woman and she you know was never you know it's not like she had some impressive magical list of words that she could spill out and he would suddenly transform the only thing she knew to do was to love and respect this person mm. as terrible of a person he was as hateful as hate-filled he as he was she loved him just was caring and kind to him and um, it, it changed Michael forever. I mean, he's still, every time I talk to him, he says the same thing. He's, I don't, I don't know why she was so nice to me. I don't know why, <laughs> I don't know why she knocked on my door. I really yeah. don't. I don't understand it. And, um, and he said something that's always stuck to me. He goes, he goes, he goes, I, I, he chose to, you know, follow after that example and leave hate behind and follow love. Right. And he goes, you know, love is so easy. Mm. Hate is so much work. It is. It's so much stress. This is his words. The guy who he did hate. It's what he did. Yeah. He goes, it's so hard. It's so Mm -hmm. stressful. Love is so much easier. Yeah. And I think that's, I think, uh, I think of Jesus's words when he says, you know, my, my, my yoke is, is light. My, Mm -hmm. my burden is, is easy. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, we've talked about it. We've kind of come full circle. We say, oh, it's hard. It is, but not compared to the other option. Yeah. For you sure. know, the other option is carrying that guilt around, carrying that stress, that burden around. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, love is easier. It's still, you know, making that phone call, I'm sure wasn't the easiest thing you did all day. Yeah. But man, when you get on the other side of it, you're like, man, I'm not caring as much anymore. It's, yeah. I'm lighter. Yeah. It set us both free. Yeah. And I think, you know, from at least from a, 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 a part of our lives, right? It set us both yeah. free. And um, man, I, I, I love having you on. It's, it's always such a good conversation. Um, you all have, have made a few announcements. There was a new film. I think it was last week or the week before. Yeah. It, it depends on when everybody hears this. So <laughs> somebody can hear this six months from now, but um, right. either way, you guys continue to put out great, great stuff. You probably can't announce the one tomorrow because it's not out yet, but I did see a teaser. And then there was one last week. Do you know who it was last week or the week before? Uh, you know, when was it? I lose track of these things. Hannah Lee was, uh, yeah, I think just a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Um, her husband, I'm going to give you, I'll give you the preview. Okay. It's coming out tomorrow. So Jason Lee, 
Um, man, I watched the um, uh, I watched the, the preview a couple of weeks ago as we're just in an editing process. And um, we have a lot of great stories, but I, I will say I'm especially excited about this one. It's really fantastic, um, really exciting stuff. So I'm not going to give away anything, I can, but it's it's a great story about a man who um, had achieved everything and yet had nothing. Mm. And and he said, "What? How, how do I go forward with this?" And even and he even carried that into maybe I can do that in church. Mm. Don't we do that with God? Hey, I'm just going to achieve things with God, and then He'll like me more. Wow, um, it's just not you know it's not how it works. Right. It's not how love works. Right. Um, God is not really interested in what we can accomplish because if you think about it, why would He be? He's already he, if He needs something done, He can just do it Himself. He right. Is, yeah. <laughs> he doesn't need our accomplishments at all. Right. That's right. I don't know why we get tricked into thinking that He He needs to be impressed somehow because yeah. You know, he doesn't. Yeah. Um, what he's actually looking for is 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 a relationship. He's looking for love. He's looking for that interaction. Um, and um, anyways, his journey to realizing that is phenomenal. So awesome. Yeah, you're gonna want to watch yeah. that. Um, I'm sure by the time people see this, they will. Um, it'll be out. So it, it may be tonight. It, it'll probably be tomorrow. So it'll maybe to the same day you're seeing this. Either way, it's an unscripted. Yeah. preview prequel whatever you call those things um yeah. so thank you for that for for sharing that with the audience i'm always excited to have you on um any updates on bieber did we get him yet oh man not yet not yet <laughs> so uh now i will say we got a, a it's a couple steps removed but his okay. wife's father is in the book yes Stephen baldwin so great story too yep. fantastic story uh so we'll see. I, I, I will say I, I, um, I'm not one that lives on social media, so I don't get on there very often, but um, I, I, I get on there enough and I do love his authenticity and yes. he's struggling too, man. You know, he's, he's fighting the fight and um, you know, he has his imperfections and his ups and downs. And I, I've, I've enjoyed watching um, how he is processing many of his mental health issues yeah. through faith, through Jesus. Um you know, the beautiful thing is um, uh, Jesus loves us in our mess, not just on the other end of it. Right. And, uh, he's living that. Which you see all the time in Loud Crazy Love. Not to bring that back to that. Yeah. End, but, but you see that constantly. And anybody watching it, please understand that. Like, that's what Brian's flushing out on film is, mm -hmm. is his faith. Because I, you know, and, and I, well, I don't want to give it away. I, I know he goes back to corn and there was even some, there was sure. some frustration and some um feedback and and blowback from him yeah. going back to corn you know people are you leaving the faith are you doing these things and so again go see the film because it's yeah. it's all in there for sure right i i remember even talking to him when he was uh first making that decision he said the word uh um uh he was like i was like i feel like moses getting called back to my people they, they don't mm. have hope i wow. have i found it i got the hope i wow. tell him that's awesome. And, uh, you know, so he spent his time in the wilderness. That movie will tell you what the wilderness looked like. It was rough. It's rough. Um, and he said, you know what? Um, and we got uh, in. You'll see the film. If you watch it, you, there's a couple instances where we actually show you what the end of the, the back end of a corn concert looks like. And that he is standing outside and praying yes. with corn followers, yes. telling them about Jesus. When you yes. think about it, where in this world can you go and find people who are desperate and hungry? Right. Well, that's one of the places. And he went yeah. there. So, yeah, he's taken certain heat, um, uh, unfortunately, a, a lot from Christian Christian brothers and sisters. But I, for one, um, am a big fan of Brian Welch and yeah. big fan of I, I, I believe he views it as part of his his ministry, his God given ministry. I go tell people that. Um, listen to my music because i sang about hopelessness yeah and i found the hope i gotta go tell him I, awesome. I i i'm i'm all all for that yep platform it's all yeah. about platform it's all about platform and, and god gave him a platform long and the, the the amazing thing is god knew this story he knew his story he knew how this was going to go and destined him for this this moment now where he is yeah. pulled him out of that and put him back in that spotlight now that he's got the shield and the the armor that he needs 
yeah. to be protected in that moment when he first started with corn, he couldn't have said that. Now he is. Yep. And, and again, you see it all through the film, but um, man, I pray for Brian and, and that that just continues on for him and really that protection around him yeah. because he is, you know, that's, that's tempting. He's in the fire. Anyone. I mean, it's almost like yeah. a, an alcoholic going to a bar to minister to people after they've been recovered. That's a, that's tempting. The temptations are tempting there for him. Yeah. yeah. For, so for him to stand in the parking lot with a smart circle of guys praying over him, um, powerful, powerful, powerful stuff. stuff. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and again, you think, uh, yeah, if you try to find, uh, uh, you know, who would be best equipped to reach that group of people, I, I don't think God could have chosen better, which is why he chose them. Yeah. So, yeah, and, you know, and, and everybody's path is going to be different. You know, if you're recovering, if you're listening and you're a recovering addict, you know, sometimes you're going to need to take a step back from your friends, a circle of friends, the bar, and, and, and maybe maybe God's call isn't for you to go back there. But, you know, sometimes God... He's going to take you out, scoop out that gunk so he can send the light back out there. It's, you know, he has a unique path for all of us. That's just part of um, how it goes. You know, I, I, I think I've shared a little bit before, but my own journey is one. Uh, my my journey with God was one of, you know, I, I, I think I started very lonely. I was a lonely kid. Mm -hmm. um, and now I get to tell people about love. Like, that's yeah. it's just what I do. Um, and you know, so he's had that, I've had that my own journey. If I were to talk to my 16 year old self, this would be the last thing I thought I'd ever be doing. Honestly, right. yeah. it's just, it's funny how it works. It's yes. how God, God is very creative. That's mm -hmm. what he does. So, and he's done it well. And, and I, you're lonely no more. Uh, if nothing yeah. else, you get a friend in Columbus always. And That's uh, right, I'm, thankful, I'm thankful for my, for our friendship. And too. I'm thankful for I am second. Um, so uh, that's a good point. If anybody's listening to this, they're not familiar with I am second or, or there's something that they've heard in this conversation, uh, literally unscripted conversation. We had no plan going into this. Um, if there's something that, that is, that has triggered something within them, uh, we've already talked about it. First of all, pick up the phone and call whoever it is you need to call. Whoever's, as you said so well, whoever's face came to mind, call them, text them, email them, DM them. <laughs> TikTok them, whatever you got to do, <laughs> do it now. Um, second thing is you have resources available for all the other things that we've talked about. What's my avenue to get there? If I'm listening to this, I'm not familiar with I Am Second. What, how, do I, how do I start to tap into all the resources you have? Because there's so many good ones. Yeah, I'd say start at IamSecond.com. That's where everything, you're going to find everything. We've got a blog there, lots of articles. We've got video films of all sorts on all different kind of topics um we find we, the books are, are pretty much everywhere um uh, most people get them on amazon these days um even i order my own books on amazon Absolutely. so um, <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> don't tell anybody no, um, sure. uh, uh, but yeah but start start with iamsecond.com and right. let us walk you through some some of these um wherever god's got you let us let us take the next step with you yeah awesome and it, if you're not even comfortable with that then email me uh, text yeah. me if you have my number, whatever it might be. Let's start there, and I'll, I'll get you to um, to the team um, to to make sure that that they've got the resources they need because it's all available. And you all have done such a fantastic job. You know, I'm a huge fan, and uh, I just like our talks. I'm, I'm I'm always thankful that you got a few minutes to come on. Yeah, well, I really appreciate it, and I'm glad we got to do. Uh, I feel like we did a makeup session here because I missed our last one. Um, <laughs> it was funny. Uh, um, I, I was telling you this via text, but literally my I was I was sitting right where I'm at, right here, about to press the connect button on our interview, and my wife texts me, and her the minivan with all our kids was sliding down the hill with all the ice that leads to our house, and she mm. goes, uh, "Can you come quickly?" <laughs> <laughs> and so I had to text you. I was like, "Aaron, I I'm not, I I didn't forget, yeah, I, but I gotta go." Yeah. So I'm so glad we got to talk again. I really enjoy our talk. So absolutely. Yeah, really man, nothing made me happier today after that conversation I had earlier with someone else to uh, to see this pop up on my email uh, that you had set this up and, and uh, you know, taking the time to uh, to do this. I value your time. I value your friendship. And I, I really value I'm second and everything they're doing. So uh, all the best to you. And we'll do this again. Sounds great, man. Love it. Always welcome. And uh, good luck to you guys. I'm sure we'll be in touch soon. I'm sure. You Thanks take care of yourself. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.